All right, so this video is going to be an introduction to 3D space. Okay, so in pretty much your, your whole math career thus far, you've dealt with things in two dimensions. Okay, you've dealt with an X and a Y axis. In Calc 3, what we're going to be dealing with is an X, a Y, and a Z axis. We're going to be taking this from two dimensions to three dimensions. Now I'm doing calculus in three dimensions. Okay, now it's not as hard as you may think that it would be right now a lot of these transitions that you're going to be making will make a lot of sense and graphing will also make more sense after you've done some practice and we have more videos on graphing coming later okay so definitely uh definitely stay tuned for that okay. so before we kind of get into the meat of the video i want to talk a little bit about the little transitions that, are, that you can kind of see from 2D to 3D, just about these these axes right here, this this new graph that we're going to be dealing with. Okay, so first off, you you no longer have just a xy plane. Okay, before in 2D, we just had an xy plane. Okay, it was a singular plane, but now we not only have the xy plane. Okay. We also have the, the XZ plane, okay? So we have XY, we have XZ, and we also have YZ, okay? And YZ, of course, would be this plane right here. And, and, and this plane, of course, it's gonna go on forever in, in all directions, right? But it's gonna, be, it's gonna be flat, of course, okay? So that, that's one thing that's different. Another thing is if you were to, were to connect these all, all right now, okay, you can kind of see something for them. This is called the first octant, okay? So you're not dealing with quadrants anymore. You're dealing with octants, okay? Because there's eight of them, okay? And you can kind of think about it, right? There's gonna be one on this side, one over here diagonal, one over here, and then there's going to be another set of four on the bottom, and that makes eight, right? So octants. Now, where x, where y, and where z are positive, that's the that's the first octant. Okay, so that's what we're talking about, and you may see that referenced in some problems. So the first thing that we're going to be talking about is projections. Okay, now you can project the point A, B, C onto the xy plane. Now real quick, but before we even get into that, what is this, what are the coordinates for this point? Well, this is the x, the y, and the z. Okay, that's in what order it goes. Of course, the order of the alphabet, right? But just to make that clear, if that wasn't already. Now, that's going to get projected onto the xy plane, okay? And, and what that does, okay, if you're projecting something onto the xy plane, let's say we have some point, let's say we're over 2, we're going to go over on the y3, and we're going to go up on the z4, okay? So let's say that we have the point 2, 3, 4, and we're projecting this onto the xy plane. So the point ends up looking like this. You go over here, here and you're gonna go up four. Okay, right about to there, okay? Now, if we project this onto the XY plane, so it means kind of we're just getting a top view, right? So we're getting a top view of this thing. We're looking down from this direction. Okay, everything looks flat. That's kind of the, the idea of, of projecting something onto an XY plane, okay? So this point moves down to the XY plane, so it becomes this point right here. What are the coordinates of that point? Well, it's just going to be two comma three comma zero, right? There is no Z component now. Okay, so you're just having something in the X, Y plane. So it becomes two comma three comma zero. Okay, and, and, and another way to kind of remember that if we're projecting something onto the X, Y plane, Z is not included, so Z goes to zero. Okay, if we're projecting something onto the, here we go, Let, let's erase this here and say that we were projecting something onto the XZ plane. Well, now if we start with A, B, C, what is not included? We have an X and a Z, we don't have a Y, the Y becomes zero, A comma zero 
comma c. Okay, what if we project it onto the yz plane? Well then we're missing an x, so the x becomes zero. So we have a, b, c that we start off with. Once it gets projected, the x becomes zero. Okay? You kind of get the idea, right? If we're projecting something out onto the xy plane, we're getting a top view of it, so we're looking down on it. Okay, and if we're looking down on something, it just looks completely flat to us. Okay? So that's why the z no longer matters, and we have zero for z, okay? Because we're just looking at something that's flat, so it's 2D now. We're not worried about the z component. All right, so now we're going to talk about graphing in three dimensions. So we're going to do some basic stuff, right? We're not going to get any, and, into anything too complex yet. But uh, here's, some, here's some things that you can kind of see changing, okay? Let's say that we have the graph x equals 3. And we're trying to graph this in two dimensions. Well, here's our x-axis, here's our y-axis. We go over 3, and this becomes x equals 3, right? Well, what does that look like in three dimensions? Well, now, you have an x, a y, and a z, okay? You go over in the positive direction, 3, and, well, you have that line still, right? You're still going to have that line. I guess it'll look like, like this thing right here. Okay. Well, now we have the Z component. Okay. And there's no restriction on Z. We're not saying Z has to be anything. Z can be anything. Okay. It doesn't matter. Because in X equals 3, all this is saying is that X equals 3. It doesn't matter. Z can be anything it wants to be. Okay. Just as Y can be anything it wants to be. Okay, so what happens is we get a plane. Okay, we get a plane. It looks like this, right? So you can kind of image an infinitely big plane just spread out in all directions around that, uh, just on that x equals 3 plane. Okay? What about x squared plus y squared equals 1? Well, if we do that in two dimensions, we're just getting the unit circle, right? That's just the unit circle in two dimensions. Can you guess what it would be in three dimensions? Okay, it's going to be a cylinder because we're not placing a restriction on z. Z is not part of this equation. So, well, we have the x, y, and z axes here, okay? We can draw this circle on our 3D graph. We can, okay? Let's do it like this, right? Just have our circle here. Okay, and now that goes up and down infinitely, okay, and it makes a cylinder. And forgive me, I'm really not the best at drawing, but I'm going to try to do my best here. <laughs> All right. Okay, and that's going to go down as well. So that is what you get in three dimensions. So last thing here for this video in two dimensions, the equation for a circle was x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared. And that was equal to the radius squared. Okay? And that circle, of course, was centered at h comma k. Okay? Centered at, I can write that right here. Centered at h comma k. But now in 3D, we're going to be dealing with spheres and not circles, okay? So the equation for a sphere is x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared plus z minus l quantity squared. Okay, so that's new. And that's also equal to r squared. Okay, so the radius of your sphere. Now, this sphere is going to be centered at, you probably guessed it, h comma k comma l. Okay, so that's going to be the difference, and we're going to be doing some examples with that anyway in, in the videos to come. Okay, so that's it. You know, just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff to kind of get your mind going in three dimensions rather and rather than two. Okay, and that's going to do it for this video. So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for vectors and the geometry of space in the next video in the series. Lastly, if these videos are really helping you and you would like to consider supporting me, I have my Patreon linked in the description down below, along with some other pretty cool links that you should definitely check out. 
See you soon.